What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Football Diary and in today's video we wanted to talk about something that we feel like has started to go under the radar and that's a particular person and that is Ezekiel Elliott and we're going to talk about how underrated he is and we I think I would go as far to say as he has become the most underrated running back in the NFL and I do want to preface this this isn't saying like oh he's by far the most underrated there's guys out there love David Montgomery I think he's incredibly underrated so if you guys think other guys are really underrated you can comment them as well but this is a video about Ezekiel Elliott and why people are underrating him so much because the dude is still a beast and he gets treated like he's a mid-tier running back all of a sudden by a lot of fans and things people are saying things like the Cowboys should start Tony Pollard over him. And Tony Pollard is a better running back than Ezekiel Elliott. We are here to put an end to that. So if you want to see more current NFL topics and you, if you want us to talk about any players in particular, comment down below, hit the subscribe button, and we'll bring you current NFL content every single week. But Matt, why don't you start us off? Ezekiel Elliott, how underrated is he? Why is he underrated? Let's go through it. Yeah, so I think the, the one thing that gets brought up a lot about Zeke is Oh, he's lost all of his speed. But Zeke's never been a burner. Like, that's never been his game. His game is he's a very physical runner. He's an incredibly balanced player as well. And he consistently gets four or five yards of carry. And, and that's what he does. He just takes a little bit at a time, and he beats opposing defenses down. Um, we saw earlier in his career when Dak was young, they would rely a lot more on Zeke. As the offense has changed, the offensive line isn't as good. You have a wide receiving group, um, not right now, unfortunately, because of injury, but typically you got CD Lamb, Amari Cooper, and Michael Gallup out there. So yes, you're going to focus more on, on moving the football to those guys. Like that's a given. But this idea that Tony Pollard is the better back of the two, guys, Zeke has been doing this for 10 years. He might look a little slower. But when your game's not built around like straight line speed, like he's still nasty when he gets in a one-on-one -on -one situation with a linebacker in a hole and he's going to shake those guys. He still does that. He's still a very good pass catcher out of the backfield. He's a complete player. He might not be a fast player, but there's a lot of star. There's a lot of star players in the league that are not necessarily burners at many, many different positions, even at receiver. So just because he might've lost a step, does not mean that he's still not a top back. And it's got to the point where people are like, yeah, Zeke sucks. That's a bad take. Like, Zeke does not suck. Zeke's coming out here, and last year, with an offense that was really depleted, he only put up four yards per carry. Throughout his career, he's had, I mean, four. He's, he didn't go under four. He's been over four every single year throughout his career. This year, he's over five. Um, in, in terms of the receiving game, last year, he had over 300 yards. Year before that, he had over 400. Year before that, he had over 500. Like he's he's still getting like getting a ton of yards through the air. Now we've seen Tony Pollard used more. We've especially seen Tony Pollard used more since Michael Gallup has been out. Um, not a ton in the passing game necessarily, but they like to have that speed, you know, a speed back in there. Um, he's great. He's a he's a great change of pace back, and he's a great number two Zeke. Emphasis on number two. He is still the number two. Listen to how Mike McCarthy talks about their offense. Their goal as an offense is to get Zeke the football as much as they can. And then we look at this season and we go, oh, first week, 11 carries. Next week, 16 carries. Next week, 17. Last week, 20. They are trying to get him the ball more and more and more. And in each of those games, he's got better and better. Zeke's still good, guys. Zeke is still a very good player. He might not be a top five back anymore, but he is still a damn good running back in the NFL. Yeah, and and you bring up kind of that week one, and everybody's like, oh, Zeke was so bad. And it's all the fantasy football owners that drafted Zeke, and they're so excited. That was one of the most impressive running back performances I've seen in a while from Zeke because no running back – I don't know if I've ever seen a running back block as well as he did against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He went out there and guys are just flying through the holes. The Buccaneers are blitzing all the time and he is just taking them and he is giving Dak time. And that allowed the Cowboys to be in that game. So sure. He didn't rush for a lot of yards, but he still did his job. Ezekiel Elliott is not the new school running back. He's not the running back. That's coming out of college that went, Oh, wow. He was also a wide receiver there. He played in the slot. He came out of the backfield. You know, he's an Antonio Gibson type. I believe Antonio Gibson did that at Memphis. 
Um, I think Tony Pollard did that where he went to school. I can't remember. I think it was Kansas State or Kentucky State or something like that, like where they come out, like where a lot of new guys are coming out, and they're like, wow, they do everything. Ezekiel Elliott came out of college in the Big Ten, and Big Ten running backs run the ball like no other. Same thing with Jonathan Taylor when he came out of Wisconsin. They just work horse those running backs. They want to pound the rock. And that's what Zeke did in high school. That's what Zeke did in college. And that's what Zeke has done every year in the NFL. Is he's gone out there as an early 2000s running back. Think of, you know, like a Michael Turner, a Steven Jackson. Think about how those teams gave those guys the ball 400 times a year. Now, was were those guys just going out there busting 25-yard runs every other play? No. They were getting four, five yards. That was the goal. And now... Everybody seems like, oh, you have to be a big play threat to be good because we see the elite wide receivers in the NFL, the, the Tyreek Hills. We see the Derrick Henry monster runs. We see the Christian McCaffrey big time plays. And everybody thinks we see Mahomes playing. We see Josh Allen. They're just making these crazy plays that everybody's forgetting that you don't have to make crazy plays to be great. And I, it doesn't just go with the running back position. Think about a guy like Cooper Cup, which is now this year getting recognition. But Cooper Cup isn't flashy. He runs a good route. He catches the ball. He gets tackled. That's pretty much how he's worked his entire career. Ezekiel Elliott is like the Cooper Cup of running backs. He's going to lower the shoulder, run up the middle, and fall forward. And yeah, sure, you may not get 25, 50-yard touchdown runs from him, from him anymore. But you're still going to get great running back play that keeps your offense on schedule so that they're able to take advantage of second and short, third and short, and use Dak's arms and Dak's mobility and those great wide receivers to go deep and make big-time plays because this is still an explosive offense. It's just not predicated on Zeke being explosive. It's predicated on Zeke being a sturdy, reliable guy that can get yardage because Zeke is not going to go into that backfield, take one step and be like, oh, I guess there's a guy in that hole. Let me step back. Let me try and cut it back and see, is there some other place I can get it to that you may see out of a guy like a, um, I don't even know. I can't even think of a guy that would do that. A Miles maybe Sanders. A Miles Sanders. That is a great <laughs> example where it's like Miles Sanders has broken a lot of big runs in his career, a couple 70 yard runs, but also sometimes he stops in the backfield and tries to figure out where to go and he gets hit. Zeke is see hole, hit hole, fall forward, get yards. That is the recipe for Zeke, and that is why he is still very, very good. And he's not flashy, but he, Matt, I love how you brought up he's a complete back. I think his his receiving game is completely underrated. It was underrated coming out of Ohio State. It was underrated at the beginning part of his career. And people just seem to think, oh, because they have Tony Pollard, who's known as a, like a receiving speed back, Zeke can't catch. Zeke can catch. Zeke has had plenty of very good receptions in his career. And so I think people need, we all need to recognize that this guy, just because he's now not a workhorse every down running back, doesn't mean he's still not the same back that he was, heck, even at Ohio State, where he's good because he's doing the same stuff that he did back then. And well, I think everybody's forgetting about that. Real quick, I will say, I think the one thing a lot of people feel like is that he lost a step. And I think that's fine. Like he might not be what he was at 21, 22, but that's like, that still doesn't mean that he's like all of a sudden he sucks. And, and like that, those are legit takes that people have. It's like, oh no, Zeke's like Zeke's he's terrible. Like, no. <laughs> no, he's putting up good numbers. Their their offense, they they said in the offseason, they want the Cowboys want to like they want him to be the main piece yeah. of that offense. And then you look at them now, they, they did lose week one. Um, but since then, the Panthers were the biggest opponent of theirs that they've played. And how do they put up all those points? Zeke has a monster performance. Like that's they also the guy beat the Chargers. Oh, the, they beat another, the Chargers. Team, yeah. Who beat the Chiefs and the undefeated Raiders? And and how did they do that? They ran the ball, and they were able to utilize their best asset and most reliable asset, because Amari Cooper can go out there, and some games you will not even realize that Amari Cooper is playing. You will always realize Zeke is playing. Even if he's not running the ball well, like in Tampa Bay, the announcers are still talking about Zeke because they're like, Devin White through the hole, unblocked. Here comes Zeke. Just completely. Even Zeke gets knocked down, but he still knocks Devin White backwards and things like that. And yeah, he lost a step. But even with losing that step, you look at his longest rush, 47 yards. It's longer than Nick Chubb. Longer than Joe Mixon. 
longer than Kamara's, longer than Montgomery's, longer than Clyde, longer than Eckler, longer than Lamar Jackson. Like, like he still has big runs. Like now he still gets tackled, but he's still like, he can get to that next level. And, it, you know, think about a beloved player. A lot of people think he's a Hall of Famer. Marshawn Lynch. Was Marshawn Lynch, you know, yes, he's had some massive runs, but it was not because of speed. Marshawn Lynch could would throw however many defenders he threw off against the Saints. It was like eight or whatever. Throw those guys off, but it wasn't speed. It was just pure effort. And that is what Zeke tries to do when he hits that hole. Is he, use, he, he works hard and he gets extra yards. So, I don't know. I don't know why he's just being slept on. Um, I don't know if it's like people hate the Cowboys, people hate Ohio State, but I feel like the the Zeke slander has been ridiculous this season, and he's been playing good. I mean, he's top five in rushing. Also, he would have never been a guy that was like underrated a couple years ago. I know. And now it's just like, oh, dude, this everyone just thinks he's like not good. You know what I heard? I heard he's like a slightly better Chris Carson. Really? That's what I heard. Wait, what, yeah. How many games does Chris Carson play here? Like six. <laughs> That's the other thing. Zeke plays. Unless Zeke. he's suspended. <laughs> Zeke. Unless he goes to Mexico, Zeke plays. Zeke has, has like I mean, he also gets like 400 like 400 carries. He gets like 400 touches every year. Like he's a like, he's like one of the few workhorse backs in the league. The the, the only true workhorse guys over the last like I guess maybe like last year he missed a few games. Last year he missed 6 games. Yeah, but throughout like his first like what is he? This is gonna be his seventh year, sixth year, one of the two. Yeah. Um, he only other time he like Yuri ever missed was his rookie year. Like besides that, he's played like he's played in every game pretty much. Besides like maybe he missed like one or two, you know, quick. Yeah. Like slight horse. And there's not many guys in the NFL right now that are true work horses. So got to give him where his credits deserved. Final thing I want to say is. Well, I guess Matt's not getting in his final thing he wants to say. <laughs> all right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you everybody for watching. Subscribe for more football content. We'll see all of you again next time.